There's a lot to love about rural living. However, the options for staying connected haven't always been great. That's what makes things like Starlink so appealing, but proper mounting and placement of the hardware is still important to get the most out of it. Here in Oklahoma, the winds can be high, so more points of attachment would be ideal. We've also got some tree coverage interfering with our view of the sky. So we consulted the Starlink app to find the best setup location. And that just happened to be right here in the center of our roof. So let's check out some of the mounting options available to us. S5 has a variety of products that work with the bases provided by Starlink. In this case, the simplest and most secure choice is the gripper fix system with exposed fix tabs. We're going to try out this base first to see if it'll give us the height we're looking for. Start off by placing the M8 bolts in the center of the gripper fix struts. Next, place the Starlink base on the struts and hand tighten the hex flange nuts to the bolts. Then secure the bolts with a ratchet. Now we're going to add our exposed fix tabs to the channels on the sides of the gripper fix. We didn't know the exact gauge of the roof we're installing on, so we're using 8 tabs to ensure we reach optimal holding strength and wind resistance. Now let's grab the fasteners that came with the Gripper Fix kit and head up to the roof. Center the EF tabs over the ribs of the roof first. The S5 self-piercing fasteners that come with the kit are great because 1. They've got an EPDM washer on them, which creates a double weather seal between that and the additional EPDM on the EF tabs. And 2. They create a sleeve in the metal roof panels, which gives more holding strength than a self-drilling screw would. If the roof you're working with is corrugated instead of trapezoidal, don't worry, the gripper fix system will work with that profile type too. Before we add the remaining fasteners to the lower strut, we're going to check to see if this Starlink base will give us the height we're looking for. It's alright, but we think we can do better. In fact, we've already got a taller option on hand. All we've got to do is add a couple more M8 bolts and repeat the same steps we've already covered. Now let's mount the Starlink to see how much height we've gained over the previous base. As you can see, it's almost twice as tall as before. Not bad. Let's get everything connected so the Starlink can begin calibrating itself. Connect to the dish first, then bring the cable down to the location of your Starlink router. In our case, we ended up going through the attic. Now that everything is connected, the Starlink dish can begin its calibration process. While that's happening, we decided to do a little wire management with the remaining gripper fix struts we had on hand. They ended up working great with the cable clips included in the Starlink kit. There, nice and tidy. And when the calibration concluded, this new placement of our dish netted us a significant increase in performance.